In the prior class, we looked at calculating confidence intervals for the parameters of beta 0 and beta 1. These provide an interval within which we expect to find the true value of that population parameter with a given level of confidence. Now we can perform a similar task for the predictions from the model. The predictions from a least squares model are arguably the main reason why we use these models. One of the other reasons, of course, is to calculate the parameters beta 0 and beta 1 and learn something about our process. But if we're trying to make predictions about the system, then we really do care about the prediction interval for y. Not just the predicted value, but also an interval within which we expect to find the true value of y. One of the assumptions we had used in deriving confidence intervals was that the variance of the errors is also the variance of y. The direct consequence of that is that the variance of the error then is the standard error and is also used as the variance of y. If we want a 95% prediction interval, assuming that the residuals are normally distributed, a range of plus or minus roughly two standard errors would be a crude prediction interval for y. The geometric interpretation of that is shown here. The red diagonal line is the regression model, and we can add two standard errors above and two standard errors below that line. That should capture about 95% of all the spread in the data, if the model is truly linear and all the other assumptions hold. However, that's not a true prediction error. The reason is because we do not know the true values of beta 0 and beta 1, as shown in this equation. Rather, we have estimated beta 0 with b0 and estimated beta 1 with b1. These estimates have error, and that error should propagate into the predicted value of y. If we perform the detailed calculations for that, and it's not hard, and I would expect advanced students in this course can derive this formula here on the screen, then we will get the formula for the true prediction error of y. You will notice three terms. The 1 over n term corresponds to the confidence interval for beta 0. This term over here corresponds to the confidence interval for beta 1. And this term here, the 1 times the standard error squared, is the prediction error for the residuals. All three of these parts come from the formula for the predicted value of y. The way we use this formula is to ask, what is the prediction interval for yi given a new value of xi? That's my input, xi. Now what we can do is plot this variance of yi over all values of x. And we will notice then that this equation has a quadratic shape. Let's visualize it geometrically. You'll notice the slight curvature in the lines which indicate to us that as we go further and further away from the center of the model, indicated there with the asterisk, that our prediction interval for y gets wider and wider as you go away from that model center. This is intuitively expected. The further you deviate from where the model was built, the center of it, the worse your predictions should become. Therefore, the prediction interval should be wider. Now we can perform these calculations in R. We've seen the predict function before. When we provide it as the first input, the linear model, and as the second input, a new data frame or a new data set, we get a prediction. We can also add a third input where we ask R not only to give us the prediction, but also to provide us a prediction interval. We get a lower bound and an upper bound for that predicted value as well. Now for those of you that are wondering what a data frame is again, a quick recap is to recall that when you imported data into R, you created a data set with a column name and various entries in the rows that followed that column name. A data frame, as specified in this way over here on the screen, is actually creating a new data set for you with a single column and a single row of data. It's the smallest form of a data set you can create in R. We can expand that data frame with two or more entries, for example, as shown here on the screen, using the C command or the combination command. That will create multiple rows and therefore give you multiple predictions with their corresponding prediction intervals.